Hello everyone. We're back once again. If you don't know who I am, I'm Tim. I work for Golf Cart Garage. I'm part of the Gearheads on Demand service that we offer where you can schedule an appointment to, for me to call you and talk to you about your golf cart related issue. Uh, if you've ever owned a golf cart, you're going to have issues. There's going to be issues that come up. They, it always does, inevitably. Um, let's see. What else can we talk about here? This is episode 86. We come here twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we interact with people live in the chat, answer questions. I go over some regular questions that we get at Golf Car Garage, and we see if we can help some people out, see if we can save them some money. Uh, anybody watching in the live, feel free to participate. Feel free to ask a question. Feel free to say, what's up, Tim? Let's see. Well, let's get started with the regular questions. Question number one. Oh, the garage is open. Is there anything I can do for the bead around my golf cart tire is bad and it won't hold air? I'd like to know my options before buying a replacement. Thank you. The, the, how, how did you determine that the bead is bad? I've never seen that before. And if the bead is bad, it's uh, it must be damaged, uh, either the either that or the tire's not the right size for the rim. Uh, but there's no, there's nothing that I know of that could fix a damaged bead if it is actually damaged to the point where it's leaking air around that bead. I don't know of any way to repair that. So I think you're going to be looking at a replacement uh, on that deal. Let's see, number two. What are the brightest headlight bulbs or LED for a 2016 club car? I put LED in the headlights, but they are terrible. I can't see anything. Uh, well, if you put LED headlights in, did you just change the bulbs or you, you replaced it with an LED light bar? Because that's going to be the LED light bar. If you like whatever your stock headlights were, your halogen headlights, if you replace them with just LED, they're going to be brighter. Then, so if yours are worse, then I'm, I'm wondering if you just replace the bulbs. Uh, that could be one thing. Uh, if you maybe how are, how are they powered? Are they powered off a voltage reducer? Are they powered off of one of your batteries? You know, I'd want to see how you have them hooked up. Because uh, in that club car, you could have four 12-volt batteries. They could be hooked to one 12-volt battery. Or if you had six 8-volt batteries, they need to be hooked to a voltage reducer, which would reduce your whole pack down to 12. Because if they were hooked to just one 8-volt battery, then they wouldn't be very bright. Uh, also, the uh, if they're not bright enough, like if you change it and they're not bright enough, I tell you what works really well. I have a Yamaha G1 gas cart, which is 30 something years old. And I put one of those one foot LED light bars on it. And that thing is bright. Talk about a clash in technologies, an old two stroke golf cart with an LED light bar, but it works great. It's very bright. You can always add one of those. They make, they make even shorter ones than one foot. You know, they make even smaller ones. Um, they've got them on the shelf at Walmart. In fact, the, the lights I'm talking about. So you could look into something like that. Just make sure that it gets hooked to 12 volts and you'll be fine. Let's see, number three. I have a Power Drive 3 48 volt golf cart charger. Is it bad if a 13 amp charger is charging a 48 volt club car at 17 amps? Can this be fixed? Uh, 48 volt golf cart chargers, club cars, they're generally 13 amp chargers. But that does not mean that they will not go past that point on the needle in the beginning of the charge cycle. What that probably means is that your batteries are really, really dead and it's working very hard. Now, what I would do uh, is I'd put a fan on it. I know I've said this before. I would, uh, I would put a fan on that charger because your battery pack must be really dead if it's jumping all the way over there to 17. Uh, so the answer to your question is no, it's not bad as long as, you, as, long as, it's, as, long as it starts dropping. And if it stays at 17 for a long time, it's going to get really hot is what I'm saying. So put a fan on it, put a fan right next to it, blowing directly into the little holes in the side of the charger or just blowing on that charger just to help it stay cool. Uh, 
until until it gets down to a regular level and starts dropping. Then the next time you charge your cart, it shouldn't be that bad. That's what I would that's what I would do with that. Let me check, make sure. Catherine O'Brien Freeman is in Facebook. What's up, Catherine O'Brien Freeman? I think I know you. Hi from Newport Beach, California. Well, good to have you. Actually, I'm not gonna lie, that's my wife. <laughs> Let's see. Keith, what's up, Keith in YouTube? How's it going, man? Glad to have you here. Let's see here. Keith says, hey, Tim. Well, hey, Keith. Uh, where am I at here? Oh, I'm on number four. What is the purpose of a scuffer? I, the only thing I can think of that you're talking about is a snubber. That's the only, that's the closest thing I can think of that you might be talking about. It's uh, not a scuffer, it's a snubber. Is, is, uh, is it, well, if, is what you're talking about this round device with a, with a, it's a rubber, a round rubber device and it's got a, like a pyramid shape in the center of it? Well, what that is, is that's just a, that's just a, a motor mount. It's the it's the front of your motor mount for a gas golf cart, and it allows your motor to be mounted in that rubber section, so it has a little bit of shock absorbing to the motor cradle, and it and so it won't be metal to metal. Like if you don't have a snubber, you're going to be metal to metal in in that area. So you put the snubber on then, and your motor cradle rests in it, and your motor cradle now is bouncing up and down as you hit bumps and everything, but it's bouncing up and down on this rubber thing. So it's a cushioning device between the motor and the frame of the golf cart. And it's on the front of the motor uh, uh, motor cradle. Let's see here. Let's see. That's cool. You're cool there. We're on number, we are on number five. Question number five. I'm having issues with charging my Yamaha G22 batteries. Batteries are three-year-old Trojans. When I tested the charger, and that's in the AccuSense charger, the volt output was 18 volts. And after the receptacle plug-in, 17 volts. Is this correct, or do I need to purchase a circuit board or a new charger? All battery readings are 12.5, 12.6. Thank you for your assistance and cooperation. All right. <clears throat> You, unless you bypass the relay and the charger, you can't test the voltage output of a charger uh, uh, at the at the charger plug. You got to test your at your batteries. So you, this is what you need to do. You need to take a resting voltage. And what I mean by resting voltage is the voltage of your battery pack while it's just sitting there, no charger plugged in. I want you to take your voltmeter. And put your leads on your first battery positive and the last battery negative and take a resting voltage reading of your battery pack and, and take note of what it is. It should be around 48 to 50 volts if your batteries are good. Now I want you to plug your charger in and do the same thing. All right. And watch that and watch your voltage on your voltmeter and see if it starts slowly rising. If it starts slowly rising, you know that your charger came on. And if it was only putting out 17 volts, then your voltage is not going anywhere. And then you then you do have a broken charger. So if your voltage does rise when you plug the charger in, then you know it's working and you know it's putting out more than 48 volts because it is because the voltage is rising. All right, we got Joshua Owen on YouTube. What's up, Joshua Owen? He says, hey, Tim, is it normal for an electric golf cart motor to make a soft grinding noise when not engaged or coasting? I have a 4x4 cart. When the front motor's not engaged, it makes a soft noise, silent when it is. You, if you've got, is a, all right, I can tell you this. If all the bearings are good, and you got to understand, we're talking about a lot of bearings. We're, your motor only has one bearing. Okay, it's got one bearing. But your differential that your motor is connected to 
there's several bearings in there that could be making that grinding noise that you're talking about. Uh, and any of them could, could make it loud. I think if a, a fully rebuilt rear end where you replace all the bearings, that thing is literally almost silent. If your motor bearing is good and every bearing in your differential is good, it literally is almost silent. And you got to understand you got axle bearings too. So there's lots of bearings that could come into play that could be causing that sound. Uh, it, if your gears are fine, you know, if your gear ratio, your gears are okay in there, then they could cause that sound too. But a lot of times that, that can happen after a fresh gear install, you can end up with gears being misaligned a little bit and you have to go back in and tap them and get them in back into the right place before they quieten down. But the most common thing is a bearing. And like I said, there's several, you've got input shaft bearings, you've got gear bearings, you've got axle bearings and a motor bearing. So any of those could make that sound especially in a four by four. I mean, who knows? Craig's in uh, YouTube. What's up, Craig? Hey, gearhead, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I was waiting for the live alert to pop up and it never did. When I found the show, you were already at question five. Hmm. I'll take, I'll have to, I'll have to pass that on and we'll have to check into that because that's not how it's supposed to work. So I appreciate you telling me that. I will, I'll check into that because you should get the live alert as soon as the as soon as I post the clock, I would think. As soon as I post the clock at the beginning of the thing. So anyway, appreciate you telling me that. I'll check, I'll check on that. Charles Ferguson. Hey, Tim. Love your show. What's up, Charles? Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Uh, so I guess somebody has to talk about golf carts all the time, and, and I'm lucky enough that person is me. <laughs> so thanks for being here, Charles. Gary Anderson, hello from George. Gary Andrew Johnson, excuse me. Hello from Georgia. Hello, Gary. How are you, sir? Glad to have you. Let's see here. Joshua says he'll check the bearings. Yeah, there's. They, I tell you what. What the most common one is, Joshua, is the motor bearing. That's the most common one that can make noise. And it can, but it's, it, it does sound, um, when a motor bearing goes out, it's literally metal to metal grinding sound that it makes. And it'll make that sound with power on or power off. It'll, it'll be consistent. Let's see. Number six is where we're at. I have an easy go, 1999, and it feels like the clutch is slipping. I have checked the splines. Only problem is it's an electric car. Do you have any suggestions? All right, uh, electric car, you said you checked this. You said it feels like the clutch is slipping. So in other words, I'm assuming that you turn the key on, you put it in gear and you touch the accelerator pedal and you hear things moving and the car's not. It, that's what I'm assuming you, that, that you mean by that. Now, and you said you checked the spline. So what, so what splines are you talking about? Because there's two different places that there could be movement going on and the car not moving. One of them, the most common one, we'll start with the most common one first. Most common spot is going to be the driver's si driver side, that'd be the left side, the driver's side rear axle hub. It is splined onto the, onto the axle. All right, there are splines in there. So take your, take your hubcap off or whatever you got to take off in order to look at the axle and make sure that axle's not spinning because if the axle's spinning and the car's not moving, those splines are stripped. Check both sides, both hubs. They're both splined onto the axle. But there's also another spot that has splines. It's your motor coupler that goes into your, your, where your motor mounts to the rear end. If your motor coupler gets stripped out, then the motor will spin and it's not going to turn the gears in the rear end. So that's that's two different spline spots. So, uh, like to know which which splines you were talking about. Let's see. We got Michael Beeman in YouTube. What's up, Michael Beeman? He says I was just referred. Was asking about the lifespan of a of a cart charger. Well, I tell you what, those the old timey ones. You talking about the old timey ones that that are uh, transformer chargers, the big heavy transformer chargers. Those things will last for years. I mean, they last a real long time. Uh, the, 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 even, okay, Michael says, I have a 2011 club car precedent and the charger seems to have stopped working and the batteries are new and stopped charging about six months ago. 
Okay, 2011 precedent. You got two things there that it could be. It's very common. One of the, if you have a power drive two charger or a power drive three, you know, that's going to be transformer chargers I'm talking about. Or do you have a solid state charger? In other words, you're talking about that big, heavy, they're not big, I'm sorry, but they are heavy, real heavy truck because there's a big transformer in them in a power drive or a power drive three, power drive two or power drive three. So which one of those do you have? Or is it a solid state charger, which is small and lighter? You can just pick it up with a couple of fingers and move it around. So anyway, if it's the transformer charger, it's common, you know, there's a relay in there and it could be the relay. I've repaired several of them. Could be the relay in the charger, could be the diode slash rectifier in the charger, or your car being a 2011 club car precedent, it has an OBC. So there is an onboard computer on your car that tells the charger what to do. So you need to figure out, okay, you said heavy, very heavy. All right. Well, that's actually, that's actually a good sign because if it was one of the newer chargers, then uh, they, once they, they, if they go out, then you, you really can't repair them. You know, there's nothing you can do. So if that's the case, what I would want to do is I'd want to find out if your charger is actually working or not. And the way that I would do that would be plug it into another 48 volt club car. Does not have to be a precedent. It can be a DS or a precedent. Any, any 48 volt club car you can bring your charger to and plug it in, see if you get any different reaction out of it. That would that eliminate the charger right off the bat. That's what I would do. Eliminate that then, and then if it is the charger, if it doesn't work on anyone's cart, any 48 volt club car, then we know there's something wrong with the charger. Then we'd go there, like probably the relay probably the relay, which is uh, not very expensive. If it does work, then we're going to go back to your car and because it's probably an OBC issue or maybe a, a wire that you might have forgot to connect. Like uh, a lot of times when people do their own battery jobs, they, they remember all the wires. They remember the positive, negative, positive, negative, and they remember all that all the way, but they forget that red wire coming out of the back side of the charging receptacle that hooks to that battery number one. You might ought to check that too. Charger seems to have stopped working. The batteries are new. So you said the batteries are new. So you did, someone just did the battery job. And it stopped charging. Oh, after about six months. So it was, it was charging. Okay. Well, let's, let's get that charger question out of the, let's, uh, you know, tackle that first. See if you can go bring your charger somewhere, bring it to a dealer that sells club car or something. Just, you, all you got to do is find another 48 volt club car. Like I said, it doesn't have to be a precedent. It could be a precedent or a DS club car. Let's see. Where am I at here? I am on number seven. Can any problems come from bad onboard computer other than the cart not charging? One of my guys got the cart wet about three weeks ago. We have replaced the forward and reverse switch and the main motor control box, but still nothing. I'm blowing the fuse that is from the solenoid to the tow switch. Uh, the onboard computer. Let's talk about the onboard computer for a second here. The onboard computer. I was, they, it can actually fail and in two different ways. Okay. One way the onboard computer can fail is that it, your, your charger won't come on because the, the onboard computer tells your charger what to do the, on the 48-volt on the club car that has the onboard computer. It, it's responsible for telling your charger what to do. Another way that it can fail, it can freeze up and send a lockout signal to the controller. And when it does that, I don't remember if that will cause that fuse to blow or not, you know, that you're talking about, but the cart won't run at all. Nothing will happen. So it can fail in two ways. So you could have an onboard computer issue is what I'm saying, but the fuse blowing, I would have two, it would be one of two possibilities. Your solenoid, did you do any work on your solenoid? And does your solenoid have a diode that goes between the two small posts? The thing that's between the two big posts on a lot of solenoids, that's a resistor. That's not a diode but the little ding that goes between the two small posts is a diode. If that diode gets put back on backwards, things like this can happen. Uh, so, you know, I'm not exactly sure what, in your particular car what would happen, but it could be responsible for a fuse blowing. You got a dead short somewhere. I mean, fuse don't blow for, any, for no reason. So you got a short somewhere. 
Let's see. Michael Beeman says he doesn't have access to another car. He lives in rural. I understand, but uh, that's I, we need to get that. Uh, you need to figure out if your problem is with your charger or with your car. You know that that's what that's the way I'd have to do it. Eric Boucher, what's up, Eric? Hey Tim, I just got here. Better late than never. Well, thank you for coming, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for being here. I appreciate everybody that it comes to to the live chat of this exciting golf cart show. <laughs> uh, let's see, number eight. I have a club car limo, but it doesn't have the serial. I want to know if you can change the ratio of the rear end by changing the gears. Sure you can. Sure you can. There are different gear sets available. Um, I believe for a club car, there are three gear sets available. The one that's in your car now, which is about, I think it's about 12.44 to 1, or is that easy go gear ratio? But they're, they're, they're close to being the same. So it's about 12.44 to 1 or 12.5 to 1, something like that. You have a, another gear ratio set that you can get. It's 8 to 1. So yours is 12 point something to 1. Another rear, rear ratio you can get is 8 to 1. That's a little bit higher gear ratio than 12s. The numbers go down, but the, but the, the gear uh, it's considered a higher gear ratio uh, with a smaller number. So it's got 8 to 1, so it's going to be a little bit faster. This would translate to being a little bit faster on flat ground. There's 8 to 1, so it's going to be a little faster on flat ground than 12s. And then you have 6 to 1s that will be even a little faster than that. So you can't really go, there used to be 15 to 1s available, which would be a little bit lower gear ratio than yours. I don't know if those are still available or not, 15 to 1s. I haven't seen those in a long time. So the ones that you have in there are considered pretty low gear ratio. So it's geared for power mainly. Most golf, electric golf carts, if they hadn't been modified, they're sort of geared for power rather than speed. You know, they're not designed to be real fast, so they're geared for power. So you can get either 8 to 1s or 6 to 1s if you're looking for more speed. Let's see, Joshua Owen, oh, he's talking to Craig, he said he's, a, he's got a 2010 hunting built on a club car frame. Not sure if it was built stock or upgraded motors. It only makes the sound when the front motor isn't engaged. When under power, it's silent. Uh, that, see, that sounds like something else. Sounds like a, not necessarily a motor bearing, but you've got another bearing somewhere. Just. Let's see, Eric says, just to let you know, I do have an M core already on my golf cart. I didn't need the conversion kit. Someone else had changed it and just didn't know what I was looking at. Oh, okay. Oh, well, that's good because that, uh, that M core conversion kit's about $500. So it's good that somebody else already did that expense. If I remember right, you have an older uh, club car. Heck yes, exciting show. I'm as happy as a gopher in soft dirt watching this show. <laughs> All right. That's cool. That is, that's fine. Let's see. Where am I at here? Oh, I'm on number nine. I just purchased an easy go cart at the lake. I had two other adults riding with me. As we were to approach a hill, the golf cart would just cut off like you switch the key off. We'd push it to level ground and it would go. I've done this several times, but only when people are with me. All right, that's a key point right there. I also noticed after riding other people, when I turn, I hear a clicking sound really fast in the front. Only when I turn. The cart was not overloaded as I drive it very slowly. Another key point that we need to talk about. Taking really good care of. Can you help me out? All right, I'm going to take the driving really slowly one first. All right, the, the quickest way to heat up the electrical system in a golf cart, uh, to, to make things get hot, uh, your batteries, your battery cables, your controller, your solenoid, the motor, the quickest way to make things get hot, and you got to understand, heat is your enemy in, a, in an, electric, an electrical system 
is the, the is to drive it around slowly. That's the quickest way. That will heat it up more than anything. Is to just creep around. That's why when you make a golf cart, when I build a golf cart for a hunting application or creeping around in the woods, I have to compensate for all of these weak points in a golf cart because as soon as you start creeping around out there in the woods, your controller is going to start getting hot. Golf carts are designed to do what? Think about it. Golf carts in their stock form. They're designed to go from point A to point B with two big old men and a bunch of clubs in the back that just get in there and they don't care about that car at all. They get in there and they hit the gas pedal or the accelerator pedal and go wide open from point A to point B. That's what they're designed to do. Wide open. They're designed to go wide open from this point to that point all over all day long and then they get recharged or get put gas in it and they do it again the next day. That's how they work their best. When you start trying to modify how a golf cart was intended to use, you, you start running into, you start finding out about weak points and, and, and different things that need to be compensated for. One of those is getting hot. Now, that was the first point I wanted to tackle in your, in your statement there, is you said you drive it around really slow, taking good care of it, all right? It'll run cooler if you drive it around fast, if, if you, you know, don't baby it so much, is what I'm saying. And you said this only happens with people who are with you. All of this, you know, that's the added weight. The added weight is going to cause, especially driving slow with added weight, that's going to cause that to be even exaggerated even more. I, in order to test what I'm saying, I would suggest go taking the same route by yourself and go fast and see if it ever fails. You know, go faster and see if it ever fails. Because it sounds like you could be going into thermal shutdown. If you're sure your batteries aren't going dead, then your controller could be actually going into thermal shutdown. It could be getting hot to the point where it shuts itself down and then after a few minutes it cools off and takes off again. That's what it sounds like it could be. Let's see. Number let me check over on Facebook before we get to number 10. Tanya Freeman Billings, I believe I know you. Hi from Bossier City, Louisiana. Well, hello, Tanya Freeman Billings, how are you? Glad to have you. I guess I'll tell everybody, that's my sister. <laughs> so I got family and friends in the show today. Well, that's always good. Let's see here. Number 10. Okay, that's the last regular question. My question is about the charger. I have a 48 volt golf cart and I decided to put in four 12 volt deep cycle marine batteries because it was much more cost effective than the golf cart batteries. All right, now I could, I could pick that part so far, you know, I understand that it's cost effective, but in the long run, it's not going to be cost effective. So if you're talking about just for the short term, yes, that, that can be cost effective. Working with a very limited budget, unfortunately, the guy I bought the cart from, cart, gave me a 36 volt charger, and I'm not sure if it's working. It makes a weird sound when running. Is that normal? How do I know it needs to be replaced? How do I know it needs to be replaced? All right. <clears throat> like I said about the four 12 volt marine deep cycle batteries, that will work. It will work, but, and it's gonna be less expensive in the beginning, but they're not gonna last near as long as if you had put a brand new set of golf cart batteries in there. Brand new set of golf cart batteries you could get anywhere four to five years if you used it every single day. You know, every single day you're still going to get four to five years. I would venture to bet that your four 12 volt, we'll see how long, I, I, I don't know. I'm not going to, I'm not going to take a guess on that because depending on how you take care of them, they might last longer than I think. But they're not going to last as long as a regular set of golf cart batteries. I know that for sure. That's the first thing. Okay, second thing. How are you charging your golf cart? Because you can't charge your golf cart with that 36 volt charger. You can't charge four 12s with a 36 volt charger. You could charge three 12s. You could hook just three of them up and charge that with a 36 volt charger. But then you're going to have to come up with another 12 volt charger to charge your fourth 12. So you're going to have to get a 48 volt charger. There's no doubt about it. Uh, 
Oh, it says it makes a weird sound when running. Well, if it's a 36 volt charger, it's most likely an old transformer type char charger. They can make all kinds of sounds. That transformer will rattle the plates and the transformer will start rattling over time. And there's all kinds of weird sounds that can come out of it. So yeah, that I would say, depending on what sound we're talking about, it's probably normal in making a sound. But you, you just, the bottom line is you're gonna have to get a 48 volt charger for that car to ever run correctly. Let's see here, look at there. Tim giveaways. Get 5% off any parts you order at golfcartgarage.com using the coupon code TIM7. You put TIM7 in at checkout. That will get you 5% off. This, uh, this expires on February 10th, 2023. So remember that coupon code. What is it? TIM7. Plug that in at checkout, get 5% off. All right. Looks like that's going to be it for me today. Just checking to make sure. All right, now, this is uh, time for this week's tip. This week's tip was covered in, uh, in this episode where I talked about the checking of the volt, the, where the, it was asking about the voltage output of the charger. You know, it was only 17 volts or something. Well. A lot of people seem to want to check the output voltage of the charger and they a lot of people I get this question a lot and they they put the voltmeter leads on the end of the charger plug and they plug it in and they don't they're not getting anything well it's because the charger is DC activated what that means is that the charger has to be plugged into the golf cart before it turns on and puts out anything all right so the way to check your charger output is like I described earlier, and that's where this, this week's tip is. To check your charger, to see if your charger is working, take a resting voltage reading off of your batteries without the charger plugged in, then plug the charger in, and then watch your voltmeter. If the volts rise, start rising slowly, your charger is working. That's this week's tip. You just got to watch, watch, see if the volts start rising when the charger is plugged in. All right, let's see. Craig says, thanks. Thank you, Craig. I want to thank everybody that participated in the live chat today. I will be back. We do this twice a week. Tim, Tuesday, Thursdays. Remember that. Remember Tim7 coupon code at checkout. Joshua says, thanks. Have a good one. Thank you, Joshua. We'll thank everybody on Facebook, too, for participating. Facebook and YouTube. I will see everybody on Tuesday. I will be back Tuesday, so the garage is now closed.